Attention shoppers, you put your eye on L.A. You don't need uh, about 500 table knives, do you? Tonight, it's an all-new Bargain Hunter's Guide. Oh, no, you're in, partner. First, find out how stolen cars, cameras, tape decks, and clothes can be yours legally. It was a brand new computer that we got. It's valued at $3,500, and we got it for $500. Then... I called the Bible. Turn your closet full of junk into a pile of cash with a free ad in the recycler. There's never a charge if you're a private party, you want to sell your refrigerator, your boat, your dog, your wife. And you'll be surprised at the stuff that sells. Okay, that was one used walrus skull with 8-inch tusks. Also tonight, Jan explores one of the world's biggest swap meets, and it's right here. Should you try to wheel and deal? Oh, absolutely. Plus, do you live in the part of town that has the best garage sales? Find out tonight. I've seen Elvis, and I've seen bullfighters, but I've never seen Einstein unvelvet. All this and more as bargain hunters Chuck Henry and Jan Carl put their eye on L.A. These days, it seems you have to get up pretty early to save some money. Or in the case of these folks, make a little on the side. They've been waiting in line, some of them since 2 o'clock this morning, to set up shop at the biggest swap meet in Southern California, the Rose Bowl Swap Meet and Flea Market in Pasadena. Why do you do it? Actually, it's, it's an excuse for my hobby. It's the only way I can afford the stuff that I want to have. <laughs> for everything I buy, I probably end up selling something three, four years later. You want to have so much money with you just to buy everything. What kind of things do you see go by here? Give me a little laundry list. <laughs> you see everything from uh, gray market stereos to grandfather clocks to, uh, to clothes, anything you can imagine. They have just everything. It's just like a, the world's biggest variety store almost. The 1,300 odd vendors pitch camp, not on the inside of this gridiron landmark, but on the one half mile perimeter of the bowl. The stuff they lug in comes in more varieties than you can imagine. But on one issue, they agree. They are here to deal. And at 9 o'clock on the second Sunday of each month, they meet a lot of people ready to do just that. These are some of Southern California's best bargain hunters. Now, they're all waiting to get into the Rose Bowl swap meet and flea market. And before the day is over, more than 40,000 more people are going to pass through these gates. I'm ready. Let's get some bargains. The first thing you'll see when you walk through the gate is the neat stuff you can get for free. Balloons, coupons, literature, food samples, all kinds of great freebies. But keep a hand empty to reach for your wallet because you're going to need it. I love the bargains. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like to look for Olympic games all over. This is about a $3,000 phone to the collectors. It's unique because of this particular cook switch mechanism. I've been coming out here for over 14 years. And I've never yet seen everything out there. I would say one of the most unusual things I saw was a sedan chair where the where the people would carry the the uh, emperor or whatever on their shoulders and this was offered for sale at I believe somewhere between three and five thousand dollars. But not everything for sale is an antique curio. Many companies and stores send out representatives with manufacturers overruns and seconds of new merchandise. Things like clothes, shoes, small appliances, sewing machines, all at prices about half of what you pay in a department or specialty store. Some people, I'll say the upper class, tend to think that they could buy the same thing somewhere else, spend the higher dollar figure for it. Uh, but just saying that I bought it at the swap meet or the flea market is, is a downgrading term. Yeah. But they're not going to get the deal. But what is it about swap meets that makes them worth all the effort? Basically, to get those things you wouldn't think about getting in the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. The little gems that might sparkle when you come here that you never notice as you're moving through life otherwise. Mm -hmm. Still, don't let your enthusiasm for unearthing little treasures cloud your judgment about what's a good buy. With any merchant that's always on the move, you risk being ripped off by dealers of stolen or counterfeit items. But patrols prowl throughout the day to scare off the would-be con artists. I would think that if you got a, a real good deal on something that you know would cost an enormous amount of money more in a store, and you could get it very cheap here, then you're probably getting something that uh, may be either counterfeit or stolen. Okay, maybe you can resist the temptation to buy, but you can still get your 350 worth of admission just in people watching. Maybe have a little snack, take a little stroll, or sample street theater swap meat style. Potatoes, tomatoes, onions, whatever it may be. Push in, the button comes up. 
push down and up. Donald says we're doing it all for you. Three dollars a pound on frozen French fries. What? Not salad. Potato salad, chicken salad, meat loaf, tacos, and chili to the end. No waste, no cuts, no more tears for you ladies. Now look at those slices. Is that thin? 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 My you God, you can read through that stuff. It's so damn thin. Are you kidding? That's it. Who's got the hot poker game? Uh, I bet you when you left the house today, get up there, you dirty. Yeah. So here are a few things to keep in mind if you decide that SWAT meeting's for you. First, get there early to browse, but buy late when people are getting ready to pack up and leave. Second, be prepared to haggle. Negotiation is not only encouraged, it's expected. Should you try to wheel and deal? Oh, absolutely, right? Absolutely. But it, it should, you should have an open mind about it. No, remember, negotiating is coming to a happy medium, not getting your way. And third, outfit yourself to do a little consumer battle. It can be hot out there, especially in the summer. So dress coolly, drink lots of fluids, and wear comfortable shoes. Finally, you have some idea about what you want to buy. But if you feel impulsive, go for it and buy what strikes you. Chances are you'll save money even on a splurge. And you may walk out with something you didn't know you wanted, but just had to have. $10 can't beat it anywhere, you know? Yeah. Everyone needs a wooden chicken. Our whole house is an early swap meet. I got this nice raft here to work on my Savage tan. Where else could you find so much fun for 350 and meet such interesting people? So you're looking for a bargain, huh? Well, this is the place where a lot of tourists come to find bargains. We're at World Famous Farmer's Market. Hi, everybody. I'm Chuck Henry, and at the other end of this apple is Jan Carl. Hi, everybody. You know, I'm not too sure how much of a bargain hunter Chuck is, but he certainly stumbled onto something when he went down to the Los Angeles police auction. Nobody's happy when you get ripped off, but there are a lot of happy faces here today as the police are auctioning off some of that unclaimed property. Even though you have to pay cash for what you get, and you also have to take a chance that maybe what you're picking up today doesn't work. Even so, there are some pretty great deals out there. Four times each year, the LAPD at Parker Center auctions off stolen loot that's gone unclaimed for the mandatory year waiting period. The money collected goes to the City Employee Pension Fund. The booty? Well, that sometimes goes to fellows like George, who say they'll buy anything. I got a whole warehouse full of rubbish. I got everything from, uh, you don't need uh, about 500 table knives, do you? Yeah, I bought a television today. I bought two stereos, uh, several flashlights, mag flashlights. I bought this auto heart. I picked up today. You wouldn't like 300 uh, brand new uh, mint condition pasteboard boxes, would you? It was a brand new computer that we got. It's valued at 3,500. It's on the uh, show floor right now of uh, Radio Shack, and we got it for $500. You don't need any in and out baskets for your office, do you? <laughs> you name it, I got it. Tools, I have more tools than Snap on. <laughs> How much money off an auction will you raise like today's? Generally speaking, we will gross between twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars. And that represents what of the actual value of this merchandise, probably? Probably a tenth. Shit. Conservatively speaking. Uh, and again, it depends upon the type of merchandise that we sell. Whatever's in vogue on the street that gets ripped off. Awesome. The property division can save you the most money naturally in portables. Televisions, office equipment, confiscated evidence are, if you'll pardon the expression, hot sellers here. But you can also get a deal on basic transportation. Bicycles, some for as little as one dollar, make for a lot of happy youngsters. Or how about a new car? This one's a steal if you're handy with tools. And of course, there's LA's own ripoff status symbol, the car stereo. It's probably the car radio I had ripped out of my car. So take the only legal route to receiving stolen property. You'll save a bundle and have a good time in the process. And maybe turn your hobby into a little business. The police confiscating from the dope seller. Uh-huh. They auction that here. We buy them. Yeah. We sell them. They buy them again, the dope dealers. They <laughs> confiscating again. We buy them again. Yeah, and, and it's going and going So and this going. scale will just keep going around in a circle. That's correct. I'm making marks in every one of the scales because one day I know we are coming back to me one what I sold previously. And we'll get back to you in just a moment with some tips on how to find the best garage sales in town. And then, how do you turn an attic full of junk 
into a wallet full of money. You use the Bargain Hunter's Bible. Jan has the details next. I bought my recycler. <laughs> I had the reputation of being tough long before I joined Wix. But they started calling me the toughest retailer in America because I'm totally immovable on one subject, that the only way to succeed is to deliver quality at low prices backed by guarantees with teeth in them. Exactly what you get at our Wix furniture stores. And now that we're twice our former size, I intend to see that all the strength and power of a $6 billion Wix are put to work to bring you even greater furniture values and the toughest warranties in furniture retailing today. Low prices, backed by a tough customer protection policy. Quality, backed by a five-year written warranty against manufacturer's defects. And your total satisfaction and peace of mind, backed by a chairman who just wouldn't settle for anything less. British Columbia, Canada. The 1986 World Exposition in Vancouver, Canada, where the USA, the Soviet Union, and the People's Republic of China, with over 40 other nations, celebrate world achievements in transportation and communications. Come on up. You'll love it. Come join us. And that's an order. Expo 86, Vancouver, British Columbia. Don't miss it for the world. The recent murders of those two college students enraged everyone and finally focused our attention on crime victims. A Jerry Dunphy report, this week at four. Hi, uh, uh, Valley Edition. That'll be one dollar. There you go. Thanks. Thank you. You know, they say the best things in life are free. And since I just paid a dollar for this recycler, you wouldn't think that would apply in this case. Think again. Every one of the 70,000 people who had something to sell and placed a person-to-person -person ad in this newspaper didn't pay a dime. And they reached thousands of buyers. It's been this way at the Recycler for 12 years. The basis of the Recycler is the free ads, and we give free ads to private parties. Uh, there's never a charge if you're a private party, you want to sell your refrigerator, your boat, your dog, your wife, whatever. Uh, not your wife. Uh, you know, there's no charge to a private party, and as a result, you know, lots of people read the paper and buy the paper every week. Thank you for calling the Recycler. This is Patrice. I need the area code and phone number for your ad, please. The people taking ads in the, what we call the pit, they actually speak with the people who call in. They take the ads, categorize them, the computer automatically sorts and arranges all the advertising for the paper that week into a database. The ads actually come out on long strips, several hundred feet long, um, and then those strips are cut into sections and laid down onto the boards, and the, the printer actually photographs these boards and the, the plates are made, and that's how that works. And your ad, please. Okay, that was one used walrus skull with 8 inch tusks, 800 or best. Did you want this in the collector's items? It's from uh, about an 1800 pound female walrus, and I think you can see it's got lovely tusks. They weigh about uh, two and a quarter pounds a piece. It's got the walrus teeth still in the skull. I'm asking $800, but of course I'd be open to an offer. Okay, your ad reads defunct airport from the runway up. Call after 6 p.m. How you doing? That building's for sale if you're interested. I got a lot of wood out here and tin. The San Fernando Airport's been here quite a while and it's coming down now. So if you want to take a look over here, well, I'll show you what I got. I had these doors for sale. 
Uh, you can do a lot with them. You can use them for, you know, originally what they were used for, hangar doors, or you can use them for sidewalls and build you a little outbuilding or something. They make a quick outbuilding for something temporary. Now, here's the 16-foot uh, tin I had for sale. And you know it's a little rusty on the outside, but if you look inside, it's perfect condition, perfect. This is the inside of the building. Come on over here, and I'll show you some of the, the wood. People who read the recycler read it very religiously. They're very into it. They want to buy it every week. So we, the result of that is we have a line of people waiting from about 7.15, 7.30 to buy the recycler first. And the reason is there's an urgency to the paper. You get early on, uh, on Thursday morning, it's the old uh, early bird gets the, gets the worm uh, deal. It's the best market to go fast. It's a madhouse. But uh, the reason I get down here at 7 in the morning, it's uh, for the last year and a half, it's been real profitable for me. It's uh, more than just a hobby. It's a, uh, I call it the Bible. It's got everything in there you're looking for. There are people who buy the recycler, they get the good deals, they do a little fixing. For instance, a car maybe just needs a paint job, a little mechanical work, they'll buy it up, do the work, the next week put the car back in the recycler and sell it for a profit. And I've met people that make thirty-five, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. The people at the recycler go to great lengths to make sure that everybody gets a fair shot. Believe it or not, the location of their printing presses is a corporate secret. Even the employees are forbidden to read the paper until it's released to the public. Okay, you want this in the collector's items? Okay, the ad reads, Famous Wallets Music City Sign. Originally, original, 7 by 14 foot, blue neon from corner of Sunset and Vine. Needs repair, $12,000. I'm advertising this sign in the recycler. It's uh, the Music City Sign from Wallets Music City at the corner of Sunset and Vine. I'm asking 12000 and I believe that someone will buy it that's very interested in Hollywood and memorabilia and the music industry. So if you're looking for a one-of-a-kind item or a bargain that can only come when a neighbor sells to a neighbor, just go to your local store and say what the recycler said in this recent TV commercial. I want my recycler! <laughs> I'm almost afraid to find out what this thing is. Tell you what, though, when we come back, we're going to find out where you can locate the best garage sales in L.A. It's all in the neighborhood. $15? For the whole thing? Yeah, for everything. About 11 Work hard all week, then what do I do? I work all weekend. Seems like you've got to just to keep up. You even got to work at saving money. Me, I've got short-term accounts and long-term accounts and IRA accounts, and I found a good, solid place to keep them, too home savings because one day I'm gonna quit all this work and by then these guys ought to be big enough to hold up a hammock it's people like Nick West who make home savings 24 billion dollars strong some of you are being asked to choose a long-distance phone company if you don't choose someone's going to choose for you and you know how that can make you feel so if AT&T's clear long-distance connections and full services are important to you send in your ballot AT&T Long Distance, for over 100 years, when you reached out, we were there. And you can keep it that way by making the choice yourself. Jerry, Christine, Dr. George, happy 10th anniversary. You're a great team. What a double play combination that is. Happy 10th anniversary. Now we want 10 more. All right! Best wishes on your 10th anniversary. Make it 10 more, you hear? On behalf of all your friends at Disneyland, happy 10th anniversary. Congratulations from Pasadena. Felicidades. Jerry, Christine, Dr. George, congratulations on 10 years. The best is yet to come. We took this car and turned it into this. And we can do the same with your car, because we're one day paint and body. And right now, during our special sale, the prices are unbelievably low. For the best bargain in town, Call One Day Paint and Body for our special sale prices. So bring your car to One Day for your first estimate and see how inexpensive it is to turn this into this. One Day Paint and Body. It's the best bargain in town. You know International House of Pancakes for breakfast, but you should also think of us for great dinners, too. London Broil and Shrimp Dinner, regularly $6.49, now just $4.99. I found out what this thing is. 
you put it on your hands to protect your fingers from steel wool pads. Clever, huh? You've probably seen one of these at a garage sale. You know, the question about a garage sale that always comes up is, how do you get a great deal? Well, Jan found out. Just about everybody's been on a scavenger hunt. You know, one of those games where you look for unusual items that you can't find at the corner store. Well, this is another version of that game. It's the long honored tradition of the garage sale. And you know, if you like to nose around in other people's stuff, this is just the place to come. And you can find out a lot about people by looking at the stuff that they're trying to get rid of. Garage sale is a versatile word. It is a noun, meaning the event that happens after you clean out your closet. But it's also a verb, meaning to get up early on weekends, drive around looking for signs, and paw through someone's discarded belongings. And to hold the belief that one man's junk is another man's treasure. I've seen Elvis, and I've seen bullfighters. But I've never seen Einstein on velvet. Here may be the real treasures of Here. all time. Now, if there's real treasures, you're going to call us. I'm going to call you and tell you absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and they're locked. Full of either cash, gold bullion, or insurance papers. I'm afraid it's probably the latter. The Australians call these jumbo sales. Can't imagine why. But out of this chaos, you can pull some true values. This is, I mean, not your typical garage sale item. No, uh, this was a hard thing to get rid of. We tried to sell this to an organ dealer, and no one would take it, so we finally got rid of it for a steal. In fact, the guy got a good deal. <laughs> so you've already sold it? Yeah, how much? $200, and it works. How much was it originally? How much? It was about 8000 if you're looking for some good buys on home furnishings, you might want to check out a sale like this one. The owner is redecorating, and everything is priced to sell. See, an estate sale doesn't only happen when somebody passes on. The basic distinction is it is higher quality merchandise than your, high, uh, than your average garage sale. I think the people should have sophistication that come. They should know value. So, because you're talking about higher priced items, in terms of jewelry, in terms of furniture, in terms of paintings, of tapestries, of drapes. Uh, so the people that attend should have a sophistication on what they really want to buy and what value is. Sometimes it pays off to travel a little bit to the high rent district to get some bargains. So we came to visit Beverly Hills to see how the other half cleans out their attic. Friends of mine told me, well, if you have a Beverly Hills address, you'll get people from everywhere flocking in, and that's exactly what happened. Do you think some people just come to kind of nose around in other people's things? And, oh, or, definitely. Yeah, definitely. There was a woman, a really heavy set woman here who was into the family, you know, well, what vacation is this? And <laughs> is this your husband when he was 15? <laughs> Of course, the best part of garage selling is finding something you think is wonderful when someone else was throwing it out and getting it at your price. Ah, that's the fun part. Let's see. We got baskets, some needles. Some needles. Organizers. How about, what's that? And, well, I think oh, it's a it? chicken roaster. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a chicken roaster. That has to go to Chuck Henry. I'm sure okay. he doesn't have one. So, <laughs> how much for the whole thing? Uh, how about $15? For the whole thing? Yeah, for everything. How about. 11. You want five, and they say three. 13.50. Take it or leave it. 12.25. So you say 3.50, and they say 3.25. I mean, a quarter is a big deal. 12.75. 13. What's a 14. quarter? What do you think? 13. 13. <laughs> All right, 13. All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm not the best negotiator, but at least I have a place to put this stuff. When you open the garage door and it looks like Fibber McGee's closet, then you, you learn. When your friends start calling you a lot crazy instead of a little crazy, mm -hmm. you are destined to spend a life of getting up early Saturday mornings when you become an acquisitive collector like this. <laughs> then, of course, when you get enough of this, then you can have your own garage sale. <laughs> right. And you have to dump it on some other poor suspecting soul. Now, if you're wondering what to do with all that money you made during your garage sale, one thing you don't have to do is give it to Uncle Sam. As long as you sold everything for less than what you paid for it, it's not considered income. Chuck and I will be back in a moment. Okay. I drink too much. Don't tell me I'm too emotional. I can't cope. 
sis. Schick knows you can't talk away alcohol problems. Well, that's a different approach. What's Schick like? It's medical counter conditioning, personal counseling, and they really understand. Did it take long? Schick helped me lose my craving for alcohol in just 10 days and a couple of two day follow ups. I'll talk to him. Schick hospitals have a number one success rate. Something exciting is happening in your neighborhood. You can get hot, delicious, custom-made pizza delivered right to your door in less than 30 minutes. One call does it all. Domino's Pizza delivers. Domino's Pizza wants you to drive safely so your holiday will be everything you ordered. to stopping the deadly disease AIDS is knowing the facts. Casual contact does not spread that virus. This week, please watch AIDS Facts versus Fiction. A special report by Christine Lund, this week at 11. Great. And also this week at 11, South Africa's state of emergency has left the free world in a state of shock. Get the story from Alex Payne, LA's only reporter inside South Africa, this week at 11 on Eyewitness News. If you bought anything while we were doing this, but I got these great earrings at one of those swap meets. How much you pay for those, Jan? Six dollars. Well, that's a good deal. I What'd you so. pick up for me? <laughs> Nothing again. Okay, <laughs> before we go, let's take a look at what's coming up next time. I have to talk about that. <laughs> Tomorrow at 7:30. For a long time, modeling was something that had to do with height and beauty. LA's petite elite finally find themselves in high fashion. Yeah, I think the shorter models are getting like popular again. If you're on the downside of six feet, then there's nothing to stop you now. Madison Avenue has discovered heaven under 5'7". That's next time when you put your eye on L.A. I'm Chuck Henry. I'm Jan Carl. Good night, everybody. Good night. Tomorrow at 7.30, put your eye on L.A.'s petitest but prettiest models. You have to know what you can do, what your limits are. Then climb aboard for a ride that's guaranteed to break the sound barrier and your wallet. You could spend $15,000, $20,000. Or you could spend 30 cents a minute to taxi dance. They get off on whatever they wanted to get off on. I don't need the money that bad, not yet. An all-new Eye on L.A. tomorrow at 7.30 on 7. Your station for North and South. Angela meets her ex-husband's new wife on Who's the Boss next.